Well, good morning. This is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred. Really glad you could join me today out here in the vegetable garden. It's a beautiful early spring day here in Pennsylvania Zone 6. And so, you know, the weather's warming up a little bit. The soil's warming up. We have our last frost date next week, which is May 15th. And so I've been out here sowing in the garden some of my warmer weather crops. And today I wanted to sh sh uh, sow something a little bit different. You know, I always like experimenting with different vegetables out in the garden. And so this is a winter squash. It's a burpee variety, but it's a burpee's butter bush. I end up paying $1.89 for this. Uh, and you can also grow this or plant these in containers, being it's a bush variety. Normally I I grow a vining variety. You know, they reach out about four to five, six, sometimes six feet. And so uh, this is what the pack of seeds looks like. So anyhow, I'm looking forward to, to direct selling these in the garden today. So thanks for joining me. You know, behind every seed pack, they do offer some good advice. And so let's take a second here and uh, read this. You know, again, they like a good six to eight hours of sunlight. That's something very important. Uh, as I often say, anything that has a root or fruit, you want six to eight hours of sunlight. The more, the better. You know, leafy greens can get away with four to six hours of sunlight. You know, leafy greens like your lettuce, your kale, your Swiss chard, uh, mustard greens, and so on. But here it says planting depth about one inch, and then you space about 36 inches apart. So enrich fertile soil after danger of frost. So one to two seeds about 36 inches apart and cover with one inch of fine soil. Firm lightly, keep evenly moist. Seedlings emerge in 10 to 14 days. And harvest, days to harvest is 75 days. And so, you know, I, we love our winter squash because, you know, you can grow so much food, you know, again, for under $2. I still have winter squash from last fall in my garage, you know, some Waltham butternut squash. But I'm looking forward to growing this bush type variety. It's something I, I never have done before. And I'm gonna be growing uh, these, or direct sowing these in my composted leaf mulch that's amended with topsoil. I get that locally from Barnside Compost every year. Um, and it's about $30 a yard plus maybe $25 for delivery. But I'm gonna be direct selling these in a, one of my four foot by eight foot raised garden beds right behind me. So let's get started. So one thing, uh, if you've watched my videos, I always encourage people to make sure your soil's nice and loose. And so you can, uh, you know, work through your soil. Make sure your garden fork goes in. You can rock it back and forth. You can turn it the other way and go the other direction too. But work through your soil, make sure it's nice and loose. You know, the looser your soil, the further the root system's gonna spread far and wide. It'll help the plant take up more nutrients, you know, resulting in a healthier, stronger, more resilient plant. And I also amended my soil here with my alfalfa pellets. And uh, it's a nice slow release organic fertilizer. And so what I'm going to do here is, you know, right to the left of me here, I planted some Kushaw squash. And so I just want to, I want to come back about 18 inches and plant about six seeds. But out of these six seeds, I just want to save about, well, I want to save one plant. And so, although I may plant a couple more seeds, and then if I get, say, three or four plants come up, I may take them and transplant them somewhere else in my garden. 
and so you want to make sure when you sow your seeds that there's no clumps in the soil and so I'm going to take about six seeds here and plant six seeds. It never hurts to overseed sometimes, but not maybe not everyone's going to germinate. And then maybe I'm going to put one more in there. And then simply just backfill it with your hand again, making sure there's no clumps. I'm going to put a, a stone on each end just as a marker. I also have a little garden label. It's nice to sometimes label your plants. I get these pack of six, six or more from Walmart. They're, and then I just use a Sharpie to label. And then I have my spun bonded polyester here that I want to cover this with. This will keep the, the uh, birds and the animals or squirrels, you know, for instance, digging or chipmunks, digging in your soil. And then, you know, once they, these seeds pop their heads out of the soil, you can uh, remove this cover. And then you definitely want to water it in real well. You want to make sure you keep your soil nice and moist during the germination period. And so, you know, we're really looking forward to trying these butter bush variety. Again, something would be great in a container uh, on your deck or patio, you know. Most of the vegetables that you grow on, in the garden here, you can also grow on your back patio. You just want to make sure you use some good potting soil, and make sure you get a good amount of sunlight depending on what you're growing. So anyhow, I hope this information was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to leave them in the section below. And you can also visit us at plantsmartliving.com. And there you can learn more about gardening and also how you can reclaim your health by adopting a whole food plant-based diet. Well anyhow, I hope you have a wonderful day today. So until next time, this is Plant Smart Living with Farmer Fred.